What's going on YouTube, GeoSnowRight here, so in today's video we're going to discuss about some important stuff that's going on in the jailbreak community, especially for the iOS 11.2.1, 11.2.6 and everything in between. A new write-up for a new kernel vulnerability will be released and this is very important since it's the first of its kind for iOS 11.2.1 and newer and will definitely support iOS 11.2.6 which is definitely great for jailbreak development. Let me show you. You probably remember that just a day ago Apple has released iOS 11.3 which pretty much comes with a security content which uh, is this page in here containing everything that Apple has patched in 11.3. Now this page reveals that there are three kernel vulnerabilities that have been patched in iOS 11.3. This three in here. So uh, these kernel vulnerabilities existed in iOS 11.2.6, 11.2.5, 0.2.2 and 0.2.1 and even probably lower. Now one of which is from Derek in here. It says impact an application may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. Yeah, pretty standard. Yeah, a pretty candid response here. But it's available for the iPhone 5s and later which is quite good. It means that it supports pretty much all devices running iOS 11.2.6 and lower. So who is Derek in here? Well, it's this guy on Twitter and he say, quote, gonna post details about CVE 2018-4143 soon. So we might get a write-up about this vulnerability and we will get to know how we can exploit it. Well, he also says um, in here, quote, turn it out, we need to wait with public disclosure 19 days after the patch was released. I wasn't aware of this policy and hate to backpedal, but on the bright side, I can play around with the vulnerability a bit longer. At the moment, it's just a proof of concept. Now, what this means is that he will still need to wait. There is in the InfoSec community or information security community, there is a policy that you can't disclose a vulnerability until 19 days have passed after it was patched. But after that, you can pretty much publish it and do whatever you want with it. And he will publish a write-up about it and in this time while we're waiting for it he will be able to study it a bit more and maybe even provide some sort of code. So this is very important since if you remember uh, Coolstar said that in order for Electra to be um, updated to the iOS 11.2.1 and iOS 11.2.2 he would need a kernel vulnerability, a kernel exploit. Now, in this case, this is a kernel vulnerability and a kernel vulnerability that is exploited is pretty much rendering a kernel exploit. Now, he also mentioned task for PID0 and it's very important and I'm going to try to explain what task for PID0 is since many people see it in the uh, jailbreaks and most of the jailbreaks do have it, although there are some exceptions. But not a lot of people know what task for P0 or TFP0 is. So let me actually explain you this important patch in the jailbreaks and why it's needed. Now, normally, if you only came here to see what's going on, what will be released for the iOS 11.2.x, the video is pretty much done. Thank you for watching. But if you want to stay for a little bit longer, I'm going to try to explain this patch, Task for PAD0, because it's a very, very important patch in the uh, jailbreak community. And the more you know about the uh, jailbreaks and how they work, the more you are able to make educated guesses on whether you should stay on a specific version or how important is a piece of software software or exploit or proof of concept that has been released for a specific version. So let me try to explain. If you take a look in here on Apple's open source page, you can find a vmunix.c, which is part of the uh, XNU kernel and so on. It's actually part of the Mac operating system, but let's get into it. Apple heavily modified them anyways. So the vmunix.c, I actually have downloaded the file in order to view it in the Xcode. And if you take a look in here, you have quite a lot of functions and import and so on, but we're only interested in task for PID. So let's actually find it, task for PID, it's not this one, this is just a comment, it's not this one either, it's this one in here, kernel return t, which is actually just an int, uh, task for PID. So we have this function in here, what it does? Well, normally uh, the function works this way, if I am a privileged process, I'm able to get the task port of another process and control its memory, read and write to its memory. Very well, but this function doesn't allow you to get the task port for the PID0. Who is PID0 though? Well, PID0 is the kernel. 
the kernel has the process ID 0 on iOS and it's pretty much uh, disallowed in here. You're not able to get the uh, task port for the PID 0 because if you would be able to do that, any process that is privileged or is running as root would be able to control the memory of the kernel to apply patches to read and write to the memory, which is something that of course Apple doesn't want to happen. But you are able to get the uh, task port for any other process, being that 1, 2, 3, 4, 11, uh, 300 and so on. So in this case, on the jailbreaks, we need to be able to write and read to the kernel memory sometimes. So in order to actually uh, skip this check, jailbreak developers actually modify this to if zero or something like that to remove this bit in here. This check if PID equals to zero would pretty much return kernel failure, which in this case it's bad. We don't want to return kernel failure when we call task for PID, we want to return a task port. But in this case it would stop our program, it would return a failure. Now in order to patch this, as they say, they say something like if zero or something like that and they are able to patch it but in that case once it's patched it will no longer check whether you're requesting the uh, task port for the process id zero which is the kernel and it will happily grant you the kernel task port which in that case gives your process the ability to modify the memory of the kernel that means that I'm pretty much able at that point to patch the kernel however I like, to patch any checks in the kernel that I don't like or that interfere with my jailbreak stuff, and I will be happy with it. But there are also other checks in place, don't believe it's just this one in here. That is for example this one, which uh, checks whether you are a privileged process or not, if you're running as root, and so on, uh, and many many others. But the most important that is actually patched is this one in here, um, which checks whether you're requesting the process ID of the kernel. So this is what the task for PID0 is, or TFP0, is literally a patch for the task for PID function in here in the vmunix.c, and it pretty much patches this check in here, this if condition, to no longer check whether you're requesting the uh, task port for the kernel or not. So that's pretty much what's going on and that's why it's important. Without it, you wouldn't be able to get the task port of the kernel and therefore you wouldn't be able to use VM write and VM read, which is actually virtual memory write and virtual memory read, in order to modify the kernel memory. And of course, that means you wouldn't be able to patch the kernel, which is something you need when you're building a jailbreak. So yeah, that's pretty much what the task for PID0 is and that's why Coolster mentioned it that is required in order to port Electrum. Now many exploits for the kernel are able to do that and are able to patch the task for PID0 so that you are able to then control the kernel and do whatever else you want to do. But when you're doing it from a process, for example, you also have to have some entitlements like task for PID allow in order to make the uh, AMFI or Apple Mobile File Integrity happy. But anyways, that's more technical than I wanted to get. But anyways, that's why it's important to have task for PID0, that's why jailbreaks implement that. A kernel exploit would usually be very helpful if it can implement that, because after that point you are able to pretty much modify anything you want in the kernel, and that's a very good thing to happen. So yeah, that's pretty much what's going on, but anyways, for the iOS 11.2.6 and lower, this might seem very, very useful, because it's a kernel vulnerability that can be exploited, and once exploited, it gives you access to the system, and it can render even a jailbreak. Let's wait and see what's going on for the moment. There is not enough data to tell how powerful the vulnerability is, but it's definitely a very good start. However, if you're still running iOS 11.2.2 or iOS 11.2.1, you should not update to 11.2.6. Still, it's not a good idea to update. Anyways, thank you for watching, and if you made it to this point in the video, you are definitely great and probably interested in the iOS security as well. So yeah, thank you for watching again, subscribe to stay updated, tell me in the comment section down below if you understand what task for PID0 is, or if my explanation doesn't make any sense. Until the next time, peace out!